What's going on, people? Welcome to another episode of Natty News Daily. We've got a special guest all the way from Australia. Man, uh, accompanied the time change. There may be a day change. I don't know. He might be a separate uh, universe altogether. Uh, Brandon Kempter, what's up, buddy? Thank you very much for having me on, guys. Super appreciated. Never miss an opportunity to talk shop when it comes to bodybuilding, especially with you folks. So yeah. looking forward to this one. Uh, before we dive in, um, give a brief kind of background intro, your, your kind of game within the bodybuilding sphere. Uh, I assume most watching are going to know, uh, but maybe for those that don't, what are you all about, my man? Yeah. So uh, yeah, my name is Brandon Kenter. Uh, I've been in the, the bodybuilding game, so to speak, for pretty much a decade now, both in my, uh, both in the capacity of competitor and coach. Uh, but obviously, before uh, before coaching, I was first a competitor, competed as a teen junior into the opens, uh, then into the the, the pro ranks, uh, particularly with an IMBA and ICN. That's sort of the, the main federations I've competed in. But I have doubled in WNBF. Absolutely love that federation. Uh, and yeah, from a coaching perspective, I work solely with physique athletes uh, within my company, BK Conditioning. And that's essentially what I'm about. Yeah. Yeah. How long have you been like full time with competitors? Um, basically since 2015, thereabouts. Prior to that, I was doing the general uh, gen pop and then the transition, you know, happened over time. Yeah. Uh, and these days, I suppose I, I don't have a whole lot of relatability to general pop. I don't really know how they operate. Uh, none of the systems of which I employ would be uh, at all specific to, to working with gen pop. It's just sort of the purebred kind yeah. of bodybuilders or the body lifters, whatever you want to want to say. So <laughs> how, uh, how big's bodybuilding gotten in Australia? It seems to be like pretty bumping over there now. Yeah, look, we, we definitely have a really good community over here and I'm probably a little bit biased given it's the, the, the community I've had the most exposure to, but we have in general, pretty darn good quality. Things have definitely changed and morphed over the years. Uh, just like, you guys uh, in, in, in Canada slash, you know, North America, et cetera. We originally only had bodybuilding. That was it. And then over the years, things have, you know, branched away. We've, we've now got a, a variety of other categories. We've got here fitness, physique, classic yeah. physique, bodybuilding, et cetera. Uh, and and it's, it has definitely changed the game. It reaches out to a wider audience, but it also dilutes the categories a little bit. When I started competing, you know, a state show would be, 27 teenage bodybuilders on stage three rows and 30 minutes of all out posing yeah. whereas now you know you've, you've got probably a similar volume of competitor but a better overall quality thanks to internet and coaching access but they're spread out across say six different male categories or yeah. six different female categories but it is it's definitely a good community cool cool awesome all right Let's get into the nitty gritty of this podcast. You guys uh, obviously see by the thumbnail, the title of the video, what we're going to talk about. And that is the concept of if someone's competed or if someone's been enhanced previously in their lives and then intends to compete in a natural federation, um, you know, what are the rules with that? Every different federation has the rules, their guidelines, which obviously makes it challenging. There's no kind of black and white, right or wrong answer to this, but um, I think it'd be kind of cool to talk about it. Um, it there's a situation um, that I can talk about that's been, you know, local to me uh, just in the last month or so that I was exposed to that really kind of reminded me that that issue is, is present, right? Sometimes you don't think about it being, a, being an issue, but it, it's there. So I'm going to have Brandon kick this off since you're the guest today, my friend. What are oh, your, thank uh, you what, very much. what are your kind of like, um, I guess, first like reaction to that question. Look, it, it's a, like you said, it's, it's something you, it, it's, it's a question you have to kind of put forward these days. I think that uh, natural bodybuilding ideally would be everyone being a lifetime natural. I mean, I'm lifetime natural. I'm 99.9% .9 sure you guys are in the same boat. So to us, natural bodybuilding just means, you know, it's, it's pure. We haven't taken anything, any exogenous hormones, et cetera. Yeah. Uh, but in today's day and age, I mean, with, with the things that get around in supplement shops uh, on occasion, you know, peptides, et cetera, which sort of come and go, I think there is definitely a portion of the population of whom 
have maybe inadvertently, unbeknown to them, dabbled in something they shouldn't have early in their career, even if not talking about injectables, uh, and therefore they, for that time, were not natural. So it's a, it's a, it's an interesting piece. And then, of course, you got to get into, well, I suppose what strictly defines natural one and two what each federation defines as appropriate in terms of the the duration of abstainment from said performance enhancing substances wnbf to my knowledge is the most um uh has the most aggressive stance on this which is one of the reasons i really respect that federation because they'll they'll come in at like 10 years and i'm like well we yeah. can say with fair certainty that 10 years after using enhancement any prior benefit you got is probably gone um so shit uh, sorry to swear it's, it's a tough one hey uh, yeah. i would say look what it's these days when i do a consult with someone and i work pri primarily well i'm going to say solely these days with natural athletes it's a question that i have to ask have you ever or are you are you currently or have you ever taken any performance enhancing substances as per the world anti-doping association list um and thankfully mo in, on essentially most occasions it'll be a no but I would say that in the next generation of bodybuilders, we're going to have, yeah. let's say the next five to 10 years, I would say you're going to have more people that are going to say, yes, actually I did try this stupid peptide or something like that, of which we're not sure if it was effective anyway, but yeah, I, don't, I didn't really answer your question there, but we'll keep discussing. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, and that's, that's kind of the, the best way to put it. I don't even know if I answered your question because I don't know if there's a direct answer to that. Um, I'll give kind of some perspective on what kind of happened in the situation I was touching on. So we have here um, under the IFBB, uh, we have the CPA, which is the Canadian Physique Alliance. Um, great federation, competed with them much of my competitive career, put athletes in their shows. They run great shows. It's awesome. They have a natural stream and an open stream, which is clear understanding that natural shows are natural athletes. Open shows are enhanced athletes or untested doesn't necessarily mean you have to be enhanced, but they're untested shows. And then we have the natural pro qualifier, which those athletes that win the overall are awarded an IFBB pro card. The winner of the bodybuilding IFBB pro card this year uh, is open and upfront about his former PED use. And I had heard about this through the grapevine after the fact, but didn't hear it directly from him. And then I just so happened to catch one of those anonymous Q and A's on his Instagram. And someone asked, how do you feel about earning a, you know, quote unquote, IFBB pro card naturally being you've taken substances in the past. And from what I gather, it was only a couple of years ago. So, I you know, we're not even, go we're not even going back 10 years. Like you had mentioned earlier, we're going back maybe just a couple of years. And uh, you know, his response was probably what most people would say is that, Oh, it's long out of my system by then. You know, it's, it's totally even playing field. Now I haven't taken anything in a long time that mm. when I, when I saw that I was, I was a little heated. So I saved it and I shared it on my page and I said, all right, I just want to have a discussion. Um, I'm yeah. passionate about natural bodybuilding. So let's see where this goes. What do you define as natural? That's what I asked. And everybody that replied, I think I got about 20 replies was never taken a substance before ever. Right. Mm. Not even two years, five years, 10 years, two months, two minutes. It's never. And I yeah. think this is where I get the most uh, frustration out of is that I think the vast majority of athletes are competing in a natural show under the impression that everybody's natural and has never taken anything. Right. Yeah. I think, Cause especially like, you know, locally we get like, there's a vast wide variety. There's teen all the way to masters, male, female figure, bikini, blah, 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 blah. And if these are all natural athletes, I'm going to guess that not all of them are as in depth in the sport as we are. Right. Like the four of us are like really into bodybuilding. Right. And then there's people that bodybuild, but maybe they're not deep in the trenches with it. And I think they, are just under the assumption, well, I've never taken anything. So everybody on the stage with me has also never taken anything. And unfortunately, that's not the case as with this example mm -hmm. right here, right? And, you know, I, I go back to the testing and lack thereof that I think is, is part of the problem with the whole natural, unnatural shtick, right? But 
it's it's tough right when when the guidelines are all over the place how do you make that call by by his by the Mm. the standards within the federation he's natural that's the thing which causes issue right like you know if you're going by every athlete assuming no one's ever taken anything and then the federation uh, saying well maybe it's not that strict yeah i mean it's a couple things i think I think that, so if we look at the very limited body of research on the topic of uh, super physiological doses of anabolic hormones, there seems to be benefit for a very long time. It seems to supersede the duration of which the drug is in your system for. So I would say if you're taking steroids or other anabolics, uh, you're probably still getting some, or or have experience, you've had perceived benefit at that time, and you've probably still got some of that a couple of years later. Uh, And I think that like when you're looking at what's considered natural. Obviously that goes across steroids, uh, lipolytic agents like clombuterol and T hormones and yada, yada, yada. But it also happens to spread across things like peptides of which I would say are not natural. But that side of things seems to, uh, what what makes that side of things with peptides really, um, uh, I suppose interesting is the fact that it's such a great error from a legality perspective. And there was periods of time where they were sold for sort of research purposes in supplement shops. And I think there's a kind of a, kind of a difference there in that, you know, if someone was okay, a full enhanced athlete, they were taking a, a Molotov cocktail of hormones, they were taking growth and steroids, et cetera. I would say like, yeah, I don't think you should, to, to me, I'm like, even 10 years down the track, you shouldn't be competing in natural bodybuilding, man. Like come off it. Yeah. Um, you know, if, if you've got like a teen, what really frustrates me is when you've got a teenager who they purchase something from a supplement shop and because it's from a supplement shop, it can't possibly be banned in their eyes. And they've done that, at, you know, two years ago when they first entered their body, their, their, their training career, because, you know, like uh, John and Bob at the gym said like, you should get on this, this supplement. That to me frustrates me because what it essentially does is it robs that, yeah. that athlete unbeknown to them of their, their their opportunity to be a lifetime natural and on a product that there's so little research we don't even know if it is actually effective uh, or, or not on that side of things but i definitely think there's almost like a distinction that needs to be made there like in your scenario like you said this guy was heavily enhanced two years ago like that to me makes my blood boil and it's like oh you're spitting on the face of the natural athlete because this is our sanctuary for those of whom want to want to participate in this lovely sport that we we just, we just love right without enhancement and i kind of look at it like two races it's like formula one versus in australia i don't know if you have this in in, uh uh in canada etc we have v8 supercars so it's like these are two separate car races but like you have a completely different expectation like you get a v8 supercar and put it with a formula one you're like yeah of course it's gonna get smashed (laughs) the same thing with enhancement that stuff works man so yeah it's just two separate kind of genres within the sport but it's frustrating because um yeah, it, it's just that it's it's a tough conversation. What I think you, what that, do you guys <laughs> I think to add to uh, what you were talking about there earlier is is terkesterone is one that uh, I had a conversation with a guy that I know and and he was saying that he wanted to take it, and I said, "Do you intend to compete?" And he said, "Yes." And I said, "Well, from my knowledge, it's kind of on the watch list right now." That and he ended up taking it, and and I'm I'm. I, I'm skeptical that or not skeptical that within the next year or two, it's going to end up on the banned substance list and then he's screwed. Right. Cause it's one of those things that they're, you know, maybe it's not as substantial as growth hormone or testosterone, but if it's something that they deem as banned substance worthy, there's going to be a, mm-hmm. like, like you said, a massive generation of young athletes that, you know, cause so, so, and so influencer said turkesterone is going to give them a 500% increase in muscle mass. They're like, Oh, let's, let's take it did nothing yeah, <laughs> yeah it didn't yeah, do yeah, anything yeah. and then all of a sudden they do the polygraph and all of a sudden they're like well shit i'm out yeah i do yeah, yeah. i do think <clears throat> there need to be rules in place i think they need to be strict like the wmbf has them um for this exact reason though right like the individual who accidentally took something yeah like all right put a penalty on them. They can't compete for X amount of years, but a lifetime ban for an accident, I think should be different than the guy who's just blatantly enhanced and trying to like beat the system. Right. Um, but to play devil's advocate, just cause somebody has to in the conversation, 
the rules that are in place are there. So if he's not breaking any rules, technically he's okay. But what we should do as a community is just not support those organizations, right? Like vote with your money. So like, while I morally don't agree with it, if he's not breaking any rules, by all means, go compete in that organization. But I'm not going to send athletes there, right? I want to send my athletes and pay my money to the organizations that are upholding a higher standard. So, you know, that, that's kind of the flip side of it. Yeah, that's actually, I suppose this really comes down to like, what do you define as a natural athlete? And I think if you chat to a true, like a true blue natural athlete, they will say, well, you've never taken any, any drugs, right? You've relied on your training and nutrition. Uh, your strategy and your grit to get you a result and that's it uh whereas you know if you adhere to the rules of what is natural uh via our nutri- our, our fed- any federation they will say well it's as per the rule from the world anti-doping association um ban list in which case there is actually a few drugs in there still of which could be potentially helpful for the uh what is deemed unenhanced athlete of which aren't banned so then the question becomes like where you draw that line. Now, for me, from my perspective, uh, as a coach, morally, and, and as an athlete for that matter, I'm just saying you, you keep it basic. You, you adhere to those fundamentals, nutrition, training. <laughs> if you, you know, if you, if you, and that's where you get all of your, your substance for, when, um, from when it comes to your result. But it, it's a, an interesting piece. Even then when it comes down to, uh, someone asked me a while back as a, uh, uh, obviously, within World Anti-Doping Association and its affiliate arms, whether it's UKD, uh, ASADA, etc., you can get therapeutic use exemptions, and they are very important for certain populations. If I'm a type one diabetic, I die without. I'm not obviously, but if I was, I would die without, uh, you know, exogenous insulin. But insulin's on the ban list because it is very anabolic in super physiological doses. So obviously, a, t- a t- uh, therapeutic use exemption, a TUE, is in place for that specific population but then someone asked me like what about um someone who uses hormone replacement therapy i'm like oh my god this is another (laughs) realm where it's like well if you were to get your testosterone levels checked maybe at the end of a contest preparation and they're below clinical norms i'm like maybe you would qualify for hsrt when perhaps you don't need it because your hormones will return to normal uh Mm -hmm. when energy availability is and 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 body fat is restored and then maybe you're on HRT and you've got a TUE for it. It's like, well, no, that's not natural then. It's a really mm-hmm. interesting piece. You, you do rely in a lot of ways on the integrity of the athlete. And mm-hmm. I, I probably look at the world with rose-colored glasses. I'm of the, of the view that because I have these certain morals that everyone shares these morals also, but it's sometimes not the case. And I'm sure you get people that want to cheat the system, which to me is like, what's the point? Just step up to the enhanced guys and then you can mm-hmm. take whatever you want. <laughs> yeah. So it's a complex conversation. <laughs> I can't remember who it was. I was talking about like uh, TRT and, and they were saying that, I think it's the WMBF that has it banned because, you know, they were they saying, do. yeah, they were saying if someone's on TRT and like you mentioned at the end of a contest prep, if you're you know hundred percent natural, your testosterone's tanked. But if you're on TRT, then you are arguably at an advantage, right? With regards to maintaining lead tissue and, you know, potentially even putting on some muscle through a prep. So, you know, that's a tough one where you have someone who, whether they need it, you know, because they've been in an accident or they're an older athlete or whatever, but by the rules, they can't compete. And then they're not going to go compete with a fully cycled enhanced athlete. Like that's not fair for them either, right? So that puts that athlete in a, kind of a pickle where they're like i'm not i'm not enhanced compared to these guys i'm not natural by your standards but i kind of am <laughs> dan you haven't chimed in yet what's your thoughts on this stuff oh i'm biting my tongue on this specific one but um i mean i i've been listening in i mean it's it, it is a difficult discussion i mean you know where do you draw the line um you know brandon made a good point on on insulin usage um, you know, what is, is legitimate, uh, medically, you know, you can get into supplements, which supplements are okay, which ones kind of ride the line between drug and supplement. Um, there's, there's a lot of gray area. And then, you know, what's, what's the timeline for how long you can't compete after taking uh, said substance. Yeah. It's, 
I don't know really the answer, all the answers. Ephedrine is a common one that people use that at certain levels it's banned, Mm -hmm. but at certain levels it's not banned. Right. I'm actually not not familiar with, uh, I'm not familiar with, with the drug, but I always just thought it was straight up banned, but I didn't realize that it's certain doses. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't know that either. I, I never used it myself. I've never had any athletes use it because whether I, whether it's banned at a certain amount or not, that seems a little Mm. sketchy, probably shouldn't Mm -hmm. take it. Um, Mm -hmm. but no, like a lot of, uh, especially like female athletes locally, they'll use ephedrine to help kind of speed things up a little bit and get, get those last little bits off. But I would assume that if they were to take a urine test, (laughs) they would not pass. Uh, but yeah, Mm. that's, that's not interesting. Uh, peace for you. As you guys might be aware, the good old one, three trimethylxanthine caffeine was actually banned at one point uh, through the World Anti-Doping Association. I think it was 2000, if I'm, I might be butchering this, but I remember learning this in one of my UKD certifications. It was uh, 2009 or something like that. It was banned at a particular dose um, mm-hmm. in competition. That has since mm-hmm. been lifted. So get caffeinated if you please. I, um, I, I know that one specifically because actually when I was playing soccer in college, we had to look through those, right? Because NCAA, you're, you, know, you go by WADA. And I remember looking at that because it was still in at that point. And I was like, oh shit, like if I get tested in the postseason, like I drink like three monsters a day and then like coffee as well. Like I'm going to get this kicked out of the tournament. <laughs> I'm pretty sure but, uh, it was only, so when you look at your, your, your uh, water list, it's going to go through uh, various categories depending on the action of which the drug uh, precipitates. But then you also categorize it based on in competition and out of competition. So, so full ban doesn't matter in or out, but caffeine, I believe was an in competition thing. So out of competition, you know, get, caf- get caffeinated because more more than anything, caffeine is used for its acute effect. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Interesting fact. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it was, and it, it, that list is actually pretty interesting to read through and see like what all is included in there. Cause there are some, I'm not remember them now, but uh, yeah, I mean, caffeine is a great example. Just something an everyday substance that we don't think anything of, but you know, technically, it's a performance enhancing substance. Yeah, yeah, and you need to be really on top of it because obviously there's a new uh, product or substance coming out every year, and that list is updated every year. So I always mm-hmm. have the the newest version available, uh, just so I can run over it, stay current, etc. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so so if you were to propose some solution what would that be oh (laughs) what do you do Uh, i mean look honestly ideally uh, ideally i suppose we we would better educate the younger generation of lifters uh (laughs) on the pros and cons of uh enhanced versus unenhanced bodybuilding so they can make an informed decision later in life when they have the maturity to do so um but uh, that is virtually impossible at a macro level. But that so one. from the Federation's perspective, I would say that on the most behalf, they're doing a pretty good job. I think that no system is perfect. WNBF, I definitely respect what they do with their bands. I think polygraph, I mean, we, that's a whole entire another conversation. There is, it has high sensitivity, but low specificity. It's not a very good tool. And it is possible, particularly in the dieting condition, when you have uh, some interesting adaptations to your physiology to test a false te- a false positive on the polygraph and then you have no access even if you are natural so there's limitations there but they i do respect what they're trying to do by having a polygraph as probably more than anything a deterrent and then having their their associated testing as well i think that testing is also something that we should capitalize on more the associated expense with it is sort of uh, prohibitive for a lot of federations but I love when I go to a show and I see old mate in his white uniform, give someone a tap on the shoulder for the urine test. And then they literally shadow them until they're ready to urinate. And I'm like, this is great. And it's good for me to see that everyone else to see that because it in itself is a deterrent. Yeah. Uh, and then there'll be a series of years or a season, a particular federation where I see no testing. I'm like, come on guys, can't say natural federation without testing. Let's see it. Make it public. You know? What do you think I mean, about off season testing? Mm-hmm. Oh, it'd be amazing. Uh, it's just cost prohibitive. Mm-hmm. There is in Australia with ICN, I compete natural federation. They do a limited amount of off season testing. I've actually had one of my athletes and we thought this was fantastic. Um, he is a very impressive athlete to the point where you would go like, Oh, could be walking that, 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 that line. 
Uh, and what they did is they actually did a, uh, a test. It wasn't necessarily off season, in season, but it, they actually went to his house, like randomly, mm-hmm. knock on the door. Hey, you got to pee in this cup. It's like, like give, me, give me 10 minutes to like, you know, get some juice going here and let's go. <laughs> uh, and I thought that was fantastic. I was just like, wow, like <laughs> document the process, put it on Instagram because people need yeah. to see that this stuff happens. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But it doesn't happen enough. You know, so I th- I think there are two of our federations over here that do it. I know WMBF does it in some certain capacities, and I believe OCB started doing it in the last couple of years. I believe, not guaranteed on that one. So yeah, I love to see it. But like you said, the cost is probably going to be you can only probably do a couple of those, and those are going to be the people that people question probably, right? You're not going to spend them on the guy that like, yeah, of course he's natural. <laughs> yeah, well brandon i think that's a good point you made about about publicizing that and documenting it because you know there's a lot of stuff on social media that goes around and says oh no there's so many fake natties they're all fake natties so, you know everyone that's competing as a pro is fake natty like you know that, that kind of yeah. puts it to bed to a to a good degree when those things I are publicized usually get a selfie with the tester and, you know, it goes on my Instagram story or something like that. Um, <laughs> we usually have a joke about it. Like, oh, you know, can I take a selfie? You know, people need to see this. Um, Cause it is good. It's a good thing to do. And, and to be fair, the last season that I did, I was tested at one, two, three. Oh, I did seven shows. I think I was tested at four or five of them. Um, all the ICN shows, all the IMBA shows, um, not the WNBF. They didn't test me there per se i think they tested randomly or something but it was good to, to be that frequently tested so yeah yeah it's, it's so tough right because there's never going to be a perfect scenario or a perfect situation where every organization is going to agree on these terms and every athlete's going to abide by these rules but you know hopefully you know hopefully hopefully something like this right this conversation can really kind of get people's heads turning about you know whether it's where they compete the organizations they support or you know what they define as natural and and those kinds of things like at the end of the day you can't determine what the other athletes are doing but you know if you can go into a show you know confident in your decisions as an athlete then that's really the best you can do and let me ask you this right imagine you were going to compete in a natural bodybuilding show but you knew in your in your heart that you you were essentially cheating the system, like, and and then you happen to win that. Let's say you got an overall. How good would you feel about yourself? I would. I personally would feel so shite about myself. I just. I mean, I couldn't do it. But then again, like I, maybe there are crap people out there who don't have any moral compass. Uh, but, I mean, just just think about it. I often say like you'd have to be a real a hole to to compete in in a natural mm-hmm. federation tested just because i'm like well, there's a whole separate genre for you just go there so <laughs> yeah what's the point of winning if you're winning outside the rules you know yeah there's no joy in that or at least i don't think there is so yeah yeah i think that's a perfect way to close this out hopefully give people something to think about when they put their head on the pillow tonight <laughs> <laughs> yeah perfect well man i appreciate you coming on this is a good chat wonderful thank you very much for having me guys super appreciated and uh Everyone stay Jack, stay Natty. Uh, If people want to inquire about coaching or if they have questions or maybe they want to reach out to you talking about this subject, what's the best way to get a hold of you? Best way is on Instagram. You can find me under the handle Brandon Kempter. And uh, that is basically my main point of call. Eventually I'll get on this TikTok thing, but uh, I'm not there yet. (laughs) Not us. Mm -hmm. We're too, uh, we're old and grizzled for TikTok. We're, we are the equivalent of our parents on Facebook right now. Yeah. Uh, we'll get, we'll get there, so. <laughs> Perfect. Well, thanks for coming on, man. If you guys enjoyed this episode with Brandon, let us know. Obviously, give it a like. Follow us on Instagram at natty underscore news underscore daily. And like Brandon said, stay natty. See you guys in the next one.